is a, is a rock. You can think of a stone, okay? The word on this rock, Petra, speaks of like a mountain. It's a giant granite boulder. It's immovable. So you are Petra, Petros, and on the Petra, I will build my church. Come have a look at Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things that I say? How many believe Jesus is your Savior? Let me see your hand. That means you're born again. How many believe Jesus is your Lord? Now, that is not the same question. Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and we think it's the same flavor, same. No, it's not. Savior means you're born again. You're going to heaven. But Jesus qualified what Lord means. Savior has no action to it except believing. If you believe and confess with your mouth, you say, by grace you save by faith, not of yourselves. It's not because of works, lest any man should boast. It's the gift of God. So there's no work you can do to get saved. All you have to do is say, he is my God. I believe Jesus is raised from the dead. You're saved. That's it. But Lord has an action. I said, Lord has an action. If I'm saying, Jesus, you are my Lord, he looks to, he watches. Don't tell me I'm Lord. Let me see I'm Lord. Why do you call me Lord and not do the things which I say? Whoever, 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 whoever's here, put your hand up. Bump your neighbor and say, there I am again. It's like every week I find I'm in the book. Amen. If you didn't put your hand up, maybe you're a whatever. But it says, whatever is born of God, <laughs> whatever is born of God, isn't that right? So with you, whoever, whatever, there you are. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, does them. I will show you whom he's like. He's like a man building a house, dug deep, and laid the foundation on the rock. When the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it. Why? It was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built his house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. Now, you can imagine somebody walking past and seeing this man's house lying in a heap, in a pile on the floor. And they may say, wow, the storm destroyed his house. And that is not so. The storm did not destroy that house. How do I know that? Because it's the same storm that hit the other man's house. If the storm was destroying houses, every house would be destroyed. It's not the storm that destroyed the house. Oh, Jesus, help me get this through. You just don't know what I'm going through. If you have the problems I have, the problems are not destroying you, honey. It's not the problem. I don't care how big the problem gets. If you think the problem's destroying you, it'll destroy you every time. If all my storms stopped, my problems would be over. Ah, uh -uh, the enemy will find some other way. He has got a storm with your name written on it. 
He knows what storm will work in your life. He's watched you long enough. He knows what can affect you. He knows how you think, how you react. He watched you as a kid, growing up as a teenager, as a young adult. He saw all the insecurities. He saw all the problems. He saw what happened in your household. He saw all the hurts, all the abuses. He's seen everything, and he knows exactly which buttons to push. He knows how to create the perfect storm. Now, that's not to put fear in your life. It's to understand there is a solution because both these houses faced the same storm, but the one, even and when the storm came, it was strong. Why did the storm destroy the first house, the, the second house? Why did the storm destroy the second house? Because it wasn't tied down. It wasn't rooted. It wasn't grounded. It had no foundation. It's the only reason it got destroyed. The other one stood. Why? It was locked in had a foundation on the rock. You go read the same account in Matthew chapter 27. I want to use this as the cross reference because I want to prove the point. Verse 24, these are the sayings of mine, those that does them, I will liken them to a wise man. Everybody say wise man. He built his house on the rock. Listen to this. The rain descended, put a one there. Two, the floods came. Three, the winds blew. And they beat on that house. And it did not fall. It was founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Listen to this now. Number one, the rain descended. Number two, floods came. Three, winds blew. Four, beat on the house. One, two, three, four. Identical. And beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. So they both had exactly the same storm come. It's easy to look at our problems, think no one else is going through what I'm going through. No, there is somebody. It may have even got through... We may have gone through worse problems. Well, I don't, I, you look at I don't see how that's possible. No, Pastor Allen never faces what I face. How do you know? Well, look at your life. Look at your life. You're looking at a rock, a house, rocked into the lock. Locked into the rock. House locked into the rock. See, if that house is locked down and it's built right and it's on that rock, you can send any storm you want. I mean, I'm tied down, locked down, put down, got steel and girders and strong and anchors and, I mean, you think of a bunker built into a rock. You can send a nuclear bomb boom, outside and I'm inside. <laughs> what was that? Can you see that? Yes. You see that picture? Yes. No matter what you send, yes. if you're in that house, founded on the rock, oh, yes. now, what was the difference? Look at verse 24. Whoever hears these sayings of mine, verse 26, whoever hears these sayings of mine, they both were in church. They heard the same message. You could have been sitting next to each other. A person sitting next to you, one can be wise, one could be foolish. I'm sure you think you're the wise one. Yes, I am. Yes, yes, I am wise. So both heard. What's the difference? Verse 24. 
Whoever hears these sayings and does them. Verse 26, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does not do them. Those are the only sentences, that's the only phrase that's different in the whole two phrases. The two accounts, those are the only two phrases that are different. Can you see that? The one does the word, the other one does not do the word. They hear it, shout amen, amen. but don't put it into action. Everybody say the rock. the rock. Matthew 16, verse 16. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ. Remember, Jesus had just got through asking them, who do men say that I am? And they started talking about reincarnation and all kinds of other things. He says, who do you say I am? Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Now, it could have just as well have said, you are Christ. Christ is not Jesus' surname. It's, it's a description. It's called the anointed one. It's a direct translation from Christos, which is translated from Hamashiach. I don't know why they translated Hamashiach to Greek. It's Christos. And then when they went to English, they didn't put the anointed one. That would solve a lot of problems. But here's the point. You are the anointed one. You're the son of of the living God. And Jesus said, answered, blessed are you, Simon Barjona. Flesh and blood's not revealed this to you. See, Jesus never told them he's the son of God. He came as the son of man. Kept referring to himself as man. Why? Because he's demonstrating on the earth how to live not as God, but as man. And we can learn from that. But now Peter has insight, revelation, you're the anointed one. He says, the only way you could have got that is if my father revealed to you. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, some people have, have seen that, uh, that this was talking about Peter, because the word Peter means Petros. It wasn't a name. His name was called, his name Simon Bar-Jonah. Bar means son of. So Simon, son of Jonah. So that Bar, when you hear a surname like Bar something, particularly in the in, in, in a Jew, that Hebrew means son of. That's their lineage. But that would be, their, that's how they would identify surnames. So it was Simon Bar-Jonah. So his name's Simon. Because you go read elsewhere, it also says Simon, who's also called Peter. So he never, he, his name was always Simon. But why did he start referring to Peter? Jesus called him Peter. But not as a name. He gave it, he says, I'm going to tell you who you are. Because the very word Simon, it's, it speaks of a rumor, a word, and which also has the other connotations of being a reed. So it's very soft and windblown. I mean, Peter, you just... You just tapped him and something stupid came out of his mouth, you know. Now, I'm not speaking bad about the man. It's revealed by the, by the Word of God. And Jesus was helping him, and so he had to take him to a higher level. So when he said, he's, in, if you read this in the Greek, you are Petrus. So you, you're a rock, and on this rock, I will build my church. And I had the people say, well, rock and rock, well, that's why the church is built on Peter. That's not true. That's not true. Peter wasn't the first pope. Are you getting this? That's not the right scripture to use because they're two different Greek words. Petros is a, is a rock. You can think of a stone, okay? The word on this rock, Petra, speaks of like a mountain. It's a giant granite boulder. It's immovable. So you are Petra, Petros and on the Petra, I will build my church. So now, Petros is a piece of Petra. Yeah. Yeah. You heard the phrase, a chip of the old block? Yeah. The Petra, what is that? He said, you have heard that I am the Christ, 
the son of the living God. That means you have insight into the kingdom of God. You have revelation. It's that revelation, the spoken word, the hearing of God, not religious reading. It's knowing when you've heard, you've heard from God on that foundation, on that rock, you can be a Petros. You can be a rock. Now, you'll never be the rock. The rock is the foundation, the living word of God. And you take that living word of God, that revelation. So from that day on, he got this nickname, Petros. So that's where they called him Peter. That we translated it as Peter. But when you say Peter, you hear the English name, a name. What does Peter mean? I don't know. You know, most people don't know. Even Peters don't even know what their name always means <laughs> until you find out in, in church. But it wasn't. It was a Greek. It was, you're, the, you're a rock, man. You're a rock. Every time they, he had a problem, when he had issues that we were dealing with, Jesus would say, now, Simon, you talk about this, this is the weakness of your flesh. But when he addressed him, he said, now, listen, rock. Amen. That's when the Peter came up. This is who you are. Listen, Peter. He was saying, Petros, hey, rock, this is who you are. You are founded in a living rock, and you are just like that rock. That rock, that living word, is when you get the word of God and you hear it, and it causes faith to rise, and you're saying, yes, amen, and you're excited about what it's saying to you, and you, you know that the word is alive, and you know that he's given you these promises, and he's shown you the truth. No matter what comes your way, doesn't matter what symptoms happen, doesn't matter what sicknesses happen, doesn't matter what the checkbook says, it doesn't matter what people said to you, doesn't matter what people did and they shouldn't and yeah, they mustn't and they, they should know better, it doesn't matter because when I have the Word of God, I know I'm healed. When you don't sound healed, I am healed. The rock says I'm healed. I'm going to act healed. I'm going to live healed. Yeah, but you know, maybe Maybe you just lie down and crawl up and just take a, no, healed men don't lie in bed all day. Healed men get up and they walk and they go and they do. What am I doing? I'm putting into action. That's time to tithe. Yeah, but I got all these bills. Doesn't matter. Every month, I don't care what happens. God first. His kingdom first. What am I doing? I'm acting on the word. I'm not doing it in fear. I'm founded on the rock. I know as long as I honor God, honor his word, he said he'll always come through. That's when the enemy may turn the wind up. He may turn the storm up. He may turn the waves up. He may turn, that stream starts beating vehemently. That's a, they didn't talk about a little trickle going through the garden. It was a stream. It was a river hitting that house, man. But I can stand knowing that the Word of God is yes and amen. amen. Yes and what I'm going to do next? People say, what are you going to do now? What did I do yesterday? Yes. You put the Word into action the way you always have. Oh, yes. and then it manifests and someone says, wow, God eventually healed you, hey? <laughs> no, you see, that, 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 that's a fool on sand. Yeah. God didn't eventually heal me. Well, when were you healed? Ten days ago. Yeah, but I heard you coughing yesterday. Wind, storm, river. I'm going to stay with what God said. I am healed. You see, healing's not a promise. It is a fact. It is a truth. It's a law. You are healed. It's not a promise. Promise puts it in the future. No, you are healed. It's a truth. And if you know that truth, that truth will make you free every time. Then God spoke. And the moment he spoke, it happened. What he said happened. 
In other words, the fact that God has spoken, it's considered done and it manifests. Many, many, God, many, God many, spoke, many, spoke many, and it manifests. Many, God created everything we know through His Word. The Word is what makes it happen. The Word of His power is what literally controls and drives everything. Alan Bank will help you understand that the Word of God is literally God Himself. It's not like God has power and then puts it out in words. No, His very Word is His power. In this series, Alan Bagg will help you to experience God's Word operate powerfully in and through your life. It's listening to His Word, receiving that Word, and putting that Word to action. Learn powerful keys to overcome the challenges of life and how to glorify our God. So you can put it into action. So when a problem arises, you know what to do in that situation. Visit us online and get both these volumes together at this reduced price. Understand and walk in the integrity of God's Word. For any information, please visit us at allenbagministries.org. Every head bowed, every eye closed. As Christians are praying, we just want to make sure before we leave here today that everybody is in a right relationship with Jesus. My friend, I don't know how you came to be here, but I do know one thing. You're not here by accident. God called you here for this moment to hear me let you know, to tell you He loves you. I don't know what you're facing in life right now, and all of us are facing a lot of storms. But what you've heard today is the truth. The living Christ wants to be more than just a religious icon because He's not that. He wants to be your rock. And he said, why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? Your first action of faith is to call him Lord. Even if you haven't been doing the word, you haven't been following him, it's not waiting for you to fix your life up. If we could fix our own lives up, we wouldn't need him. No, he knew that we would sin and yet, he still sent His Son, Jesus, to come and die on the cross to pay for your sin. And He did. He paid for your sin in full. And then He rose from the dead. And today He is alive. Now you believe that. That's why you're here. And the Bible says when you do, you're made righteous. But notice the verse says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. I want to lead you in that prayer right now. And I'm not going to embarrass you. We're all going to pray out loud together. But today you say, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be born again. God, please save me. Then while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, wherever you're standing, just lift your hand up right now. Raise your hand. Say, that's me. Just say this with me. Dear Jesus, thank you. You died for me. You rose from the dead. And today you are alive. And I believe that. I call you Lord. You are my Savior. From this day on, I live for you, to serve you, and to worship you. One day, I know I'll leave this earth, and I'll stand before you and see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, welcome home. Now, here's the thing. We want to help you. This is not an easy decision to walk in once you've made that decision because we know you heard about it today. The storms are going to come. But we prepare you for that. We want to make sure you're ready. So we've got something we want to give to you to get into your hands. It's going to explain what just happened and some guidelines now that you are a Christian. It's a free gift from us to you. And if you're watching online, just click on Salvation. You saw the button pop up now. And then you fill in your details. We'll make sure you get that information. And if you don't see it there, please just go to our website, thebasecfc.org, and under Contact Us, you'll find the Salvation tab there as well. And you can fill in the form and get the information. God bless you. Welcome home. Welcome to the family. Amen. Congratulations to all of those that decided to make Jesus their Savior, their Lord. If that was you, what you can do is you can make your way to our website because we have some information that we'd like to get to you that will help you in your walk with God today and will help you build your faith. 
what you can also do is you can fill in your name and your details because we have people here at Allenbag Ministries that would like to make contact with you and help you in your walk with God. Well, if you enjoyed this message, this message was only part of an entire series. I remember that when I started listening to this word, the integrity of God's word, I could put it into action in my own life. I was believing for a wife and I was believing for a marriage, but not only a marriage, a happy marriage. And now I can testify that by standing on the scripture and by standing on God's word, the integrity of God's word. I am now happily married with a blessed marriage, with a beautiful wife, because God's word is true. God's word is yes and amen. And if he has done it for me, I know that he can do it for you as well. So what you can do, you can make your way to our website and you can get this entire series for yourself and start learning how you can trust in the integrity of God's word. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us on Wisdom for Life. I'm Joshua Bagg and remember that Jesus is Lord and life is a choice. Choose life. Visit Alan Bag Ministries online. At alanbagministries.org, you can find out more about Alan Bag, the call of God on his life, and more about who we are as a ministry. On our website, you will also be able to connect with us by making use of our contact details. You will also find out about the heartbeat of Allen Bank Ministries and how you can know Jesus as Lord and Savior. On our website, you can find out how to get involved as a partner or even find out more information about partnering with Allen Bank Ministries. You can also make use of our easy-to-use giving facilities on our website and get involved in the many projects and ways available. Through the grace of God, Allen Bag Ministries help many to get through the challenges they face on a daily basis. And our heart is to help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org and let us help you identify and succeed in what the Lord has called you to do.